Jill Shively testified to a grand jury that O.J. Simpson almost hit her car with his Ford Bronco just after the time that Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were murdered. She never testified during the trial because prosecutors pulled her as a witness when they learned she sold her interview to a television tabloid show, hard copy. Jill's in our Burbank studio. Later, I'll be joined by Scott Turow, Martha Smilgus, and Leonard Marks. Jill, what a, what a great witness you would have been. I, I know there's a, some people believe your story, some people don't. Uh, you offered to not take the money from uh, hard copy uh, when there was an objection to it. And, and you have since, as I understand it, turned down quite a lot of money to appear elsewhere. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, at the time when they called me in about the money, I hadn't taken it. And I, I said, well, I'll turn it down. I don't have to take the money. And and other prosecutors were support, supportive of that. And um, I had a big to-do with Marsha Clark about it and made it worse. And uh, yeah, and since then I have, I've turned down over $100,000. To appear uh, in other shows. To do other shows, the tabloids. Uh, it was like a feeding frenzy, and I haven't worked for a long time, and I could have used it, but I felt it was blood money. I made a mistake, and I didn't know at the time what was going on, and I, you know, I regret that. That's the only thing I regret right now. So, yeah. so Jill, you're, you're saying you could have, you could have taken $100,000 from various tabloid shows to appear in the meantime, and you, and you chose not to do it, even though you can obviously use the money. Who can't? $100,000. Right. Different tabloids have offered me money. I've had people still come to this day come to my door. It's been two years. My daughter um, tells me all the time, there's another guy. We, she wants to know if we should hide or what should we do. And it's a constant thing going on. Why, why have you chosen to appear here, Jill? Well, one thing I want to say real quick, uh, I want to correct you on your time. You had said 1045. Yes. And it's 10:50, and it's, if, I, if I say 10:45 now, then I'll really get in more trouble. Every little thing I say, okay. Or that's so why I wanted to correct. It was 10:50. I saw OJ. And what, tell tell us about that that uh, that Sunday night. Where where were you? You were coming from your home. I was coming from my home. I had dropped my daughter off at my mother's, and I'd had the flu all day, and I was hungry. And I I thought at the time this market Westward Ho closed at 11, so I left my home at 10:45. And at the intersection of uh, San Vicente and Bundy, it's where I almost collided with O.J. Simpson's Bronco. Mm -hmm. And you, and when you first, uh, you first almost had the collision, you, the cars all stopped. There was another car involved as well, right, Jill? There was a, se a, a third car going uh, west on San Vicente, and it also stopped to avoid being hit by O.J. Simpson's car, which had gone up into the median. Mm -hmm. and, so, the, um, so the Bronco went up on the median and stopped? It had to stop because it was blocked by the other car. And then they jostled with moving each other's car out of the way so O.J.'s car could go. And at that time, his lights were off, and I, I recognized him. I, first, I told Marsha Clark I thought it was Marcus Allen, but then I realized it was O.J. Simpson because I recognized his voice yelling at the car. And he had also given me this, this look like, you know, what are you doing here? And I thought he was drunk at that time, and I had written, I had memorized the license. I looked at the license plate number, and I said, "Well, it's either 3CWZ788 or 3CZW788." And I had turned it in the next morning, reporting him as a drunk driver. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Without knowing anything about the murders. I knew nothing at, at 7 a.m. in the morning. I had to be at work at 6. I knew nothing about the murders. I knew nothing what was going on. And, you, and you, you, there's a record of you turning in that license plate the next morning. They have a report. They have a police report. They have my police report on file. And you and thought it, you were dealing with a drunk person? I thought I was dealing with a drunk driver. Um, nothing more at that time. And then all of a sudden I have all these police and media come to my door and um, there's been a murder, they say to me. And I thought, uh, they thought I would committed a murder. So I was kind of scared and then everything else just broke loose. Well, I find that astonishing. You, you actually made a report and reported that license of that van as a drunk driver at 7 a.m. the following morning before, before really it was announced at all that, that these murders had taken place. Is that right? That's right. And Mike Fleeman and Associated Press had done a story, and he even said then, yeah, she turned this stuff in before it was known about the murders. Mm -hmm. And my feud with Marsha Clark came into play. And it was escalated by someone out there slandering me, and it just got bigger and bigger. And she basically said to me, I'm going to make an example out of you. And um, people who sell their stories. And I said, well, I haven't accepted any money. I've turned down money. I tried to stay credible. Um, I tried everything to appease her. And it just got worse and worse and worse with her. Mm -hmm. You have no doubt in your mind that you were looking at O.J. Simpson driving that white Bronco that night. 
Oh, I know it's him by his face. I know from his voice. I know it was O.J. Simpson. I, and O.J. knows I saw him there. We had said, well, let's him take a lie detector test. I'll take a lie detector test. And he wouldn't do it. Well, evidently he did do it, according to the Schiller book, that he did take a lie detector test and failed it very poorly. Have you ever taken a lie detector test, uh, Jill? No, I have not, but I've, I've been open for it all along. Mm -hmm. So you'd be willing to take a lie detector test? Any time. Mm -hmm. I've you, never... Were you visited? Uh, you never what, dear? I, I've never, I've never, you know, they've said, well, let's take a lie detector test. I said, okay, well, let me know when and where. And they've never, they said they believe me, Marsha Clark says, that she, but I blew her case. And she was furious with me about that. Well, you know, it's astonishing to me that you reported that license plate at 7 a.m. and the police should have a record of that. It's also astonishing to me that if they really wanted to characterize you as someone who was out for money, that you've turned down, as you say, $100,000 to appear on other shows. You're appearing here for, for no payment at all. Uh, right. So, you know, I've never met you, we've never talked, but, you know, you reek of the truth to me. Well, I have nothing to gain from it. My life has been hell the last two years because of that split time where I saw what I saw and um, someone said to me you couldn't have made up that timing 1050 who would have thought that time and, and the license plate number I mean I, I have nothing to gain from it I was scared most of the time through the whole thing I've gotten people coming to had people come to my door you know I've had lies printed out there about me I've been slandered all over the place because of what I've spoken out and then the new Joe Bosco book which I think you know through Alice that I'm upset about that was what prompted me to come on I'm just like one lie after the other you know, saying that I'm a felony probationer on in his book, and there's all sorts of lies that I, I'm. It's not true. That you saw him at 10:50, you reported his license plate at 7 a.m., and you've turned down all this money in the meantime. That says it for me. Yeah, I, I'm not in it for money. My sister was murdered in August of '94 by a boyfriend, and so it's made it harder for me to even think about anything to do with money. And and I've. I've had, you know, I haven't worked that much in the last couple of years. I, I've been fired from jobs because of my involvement with the OJ case. Okay, we've come, we've run to the end of this, Jill. I, I find you extremely credible. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. Thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, we're going to go to a break, and then we'll be right back. We'll be joined by Scott Turow, Martha Smilgus, and Leonard Marks. Be right back. Thanks, Jill.